the On The Level Talk the Show. You're tuned to On The Level with Ancobia. This is Muta Baruka, Ayre. Get ready for some of the hottest talk on radio. The On A Level Talk Show is on the air. Let your voice be heard. The On A Level Talk Show addresses issues that matter to you. On Cobia with On A Level. What's happening? This is Gina Yashere, comedian extraordinaire. Don't turn that dial or else I'll do you something. Now, on the On A Level Talk Show, we shall be continuing part two of our discussion with Professor Walter Williams. We're asking the question, who is this man called God? With a question mark. Who is this man called God? Who do you say he is? Well, Professor Walter Williams is going to be talking to you. We are dealing with a different topic and we want to get into that right about now. Last week, Professor Williams took us through spirituality and religion and helped us to see what was the difference between spirituality and religion. This week, he's answering the question, who is this man called God? Professor? Yes. Who is this man called God? See, God is a man. And one has to really realize that. Let that sink in to your psyche. God is a man, okay? And people have been misled to believe that God is something else other than a man. Now, if you don't believe that God it's not a man. Then every time an individual uses the term or say the word God, they say he, his, or him. Is that true, Ancobia? Yes, that's true. That's true. Now, every religion, every man-made religion, in fact, all religions are man-made, and every religion has a God. In the Christian religion, you have a dead white man on the cross that's called Jesus the Christ. He is depicted as being God, a corporal God. Okay? And they say that this Jesus Christ has an incorporal father. That means, the the word incorporal means invisible father. That is supposed to be the father of this Jesus. That Jesus has an image which is corporal where you can see it. Okay? And then you go into Allah being connected with Islam. That's an incorporal God. Then you go into Judaism that has Yahweh. And Jehovah as God, that's incorporal, invisible God, all by thought from the human being. And then you go into Buddhism. Buddhism has a corporal, big fat image that you call Buddha. <laughs> yes. With, with the diaper and so forth and so on. <laughs> <laughs> and got hanging breasts and so forth. And uh, this image is supposed to be God. And then you go into Hinduism. You go into Zoroastrianism, all those religions as a God. So I want you to understand that God is a man because every time an individual uses the term God, they say he, he is a him. Now, this is the misleading part mm-hmm. about God. See, God is being used in a corporal way, in an invisible way. Every human on earth has got a different idea about their own personal concept about God. Mm-hmm. Now, these religions will tell you that God created the stars, the sky, the sun, the moon, the air, uh, earth, water, vegetation, animals, and humanity. That's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Because, again, let me go back to God being a man. A man singularly cannot create anything with life in it. There's the, the goddess, singularly, which is the female. She cannot create anything with life in it. Now, the only way that the two can create anything with life, they have to sexually mate together. Mm -hmm. And then at that instance, they can procreate and bring a life in, another human in, to this world. Okay? But if you separate them singularly, they cannot do that. Okay? So now, Mm -hmm. my wife came to me one day. She says, Walter, I want to tell you something about God. She says, God, now listen to this. You should write this down. Okay. I got a pen. I got my pen and paper ready. She says, God Mm -hmm. is an abstract idea. Okay. God is an abstract idea. That needs human spirituality. Okay. To give it life. Okay. You take that and in your silence, 
Just read it. Mm. God yeah, is an, let me just get it right. God is an abstract idea that needs human spirituality to give it light. To give life, it life, 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 yes. God is an abstract idea that needs human spirituality to give it life. Mm-hmm. See, God, we're talking about it now. Okay? So now, what people ask me, says, okay, since you're saying that and talking about God, that God has no power outside of religion. See, that's another thing I want to bring up. Mm-hmm. Outside of religion, God has no power. Okay? Now, inside of religion, God has power. You know where God gets his power from? From people believing in God. Okay. Giving God their own personal spiritual power. Mm-hmm. Okay? This dead white man on the cross hanging up there. It's dead. It's a dead image. If you want to give that dead image life, believe in it. You give it your life. The Bible is a dead book. It's full of myths, allegories, and metaphors, and lies. If you want to give life to the Bible, you believe in the Bible. See, the Bible is the book that one has to believe in. But if you don't believe in the Bible, the Bible is dead. You give the Bible your life, or you give it life to the Bible from your personal power that was given to you at the time of your birth, Mm -hmm. okay? So God, people have to really understand, is a man. Mm -hmm. And every time an individual uses the term God, they say he is a him. Now, let's go into some definition. Now, people ask me, do I believe in God? No, I don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this now. I'm not an atheist. Also, I want them to listen to this. I know that there's a higher power than Walter Williams. Mm. I know that something higher than me created Walter Williams. What that is or was, I don't know. I can't give you an answer to that because that's called the mystery of life. No human on earth can give you that answer. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay, how much education they have, how much money they have, what station in life they hold. They can't give you that. Mm-hmm. You have to say the higher power of creation. Okay? The higher power. What does the higher power of creation create? The stars, the sky, the moon, the air, the sun, water, earth, vegetation, animals, and humanity. That is all coming from the higher power of creation, not from God. Now, let's take the human beings and set them aside from the creation, which is the higher power created all humans and the other things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Let's set the human beings aside. And let's go in and try to find some definition about God. Now, let's go to the dictionary. And you look up in the dictionary, God, G-O-D. It says a male deity. That's the first definition, a male deity. Second definition, supreme being. That's what it said, a supreme being. That's the definition for God. Male deity, a supreme being. Okay? Now, let's look up supreme being. Okay? It says, in the supreme being, it says, creator. First definition. Second, one who creates. You got that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, let's look up creator. It says, in the definition of creator, it says, an object, and a symbol that is thought to be God or the supreme being. I'll go over that again. The definition of creator, it says, an idea, an object, or a subject that is thought to be God or the supreme being. So what they're teaching people in these various religions Mm -hmm. to put a thought in their mind about God, they're teaching these people that God created the stars, the sky, the moon, air, water, earth, sun, animals, vegetation, and humanity. Okay, let's just bring you home for our listeners here Mm -hmm. because... I know within your work, Professor Williams, your aim is to really reconnect African people in the diaspora back to their ancient spiritual teachings from Africa. Now, if you're saying that people have this notion of a being or a creator called God, and you're saying that that notion is incorrect, in the ancient times, how did they kind of perceive, well, did they even have a concept of God, so to speak? 
See, God is, is a term used, like I said before, and I'll repeat, mm -hmm. using religion only. Okay. You see, outside of religion, God has no power. So you're saying in the ancient times there was no religions? There was no religion. Okay. Okay? And so therefore, people knew about their own personal spirituality. See, that's the key. That's what's happening that is wrong today. Mm -hmm. The people are taught in their early innocency about a religion. Say, for instance, you, coming out of your mother's womb, mm -hmm. connected to her umbilical cord. That umbilical cord is cut by the doctor, separates you from your mother. The doctor spanks you on your behind, mm -hmm. that surge of life coming through your body. And But you and all humans, they have an invisible umbilical cord, which is your pineal gland. Your pineal gland is a sensor organ that sits in the middle of your brain that serves as a receiver and a center between you and the universe, okay? It's a conduit there. Mm -hmm. See, that's your connection. That's your spiritual connection. See, so therefore, once that life began to surge through your body, you were given your spiritual and divine individual birthright which is your spiritual power. Mm -hmm. See, connected to the universe, you see? And then people with these man-made religions are directed to give it away and come away from their indwelling divine spiritual birthright and their power and give it to a dead white man on a cross or give it to a Allah of Islam or give it to a Yahweh or Jehovah, and et cetera, et cetera, you see? Now, let's go back to the Creator. Now, here, every human on earth are creators and creatress, the female. Mm -hmm. Everything that you see around you and Cobia, except for anything with life in it, mm -hmm. everything else you see around you, the telephone that you're using, the table that you're sitting at, the desk or whatever you're sitting at, the lamp around you, everything. Mm -hmm was created by a man or by a woman. Mm -hmm. It was in their minds that they conceived the idea of the table that you're sitting at or the chair, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But that table or chair or telephone or whatever you see around you has no life in it. What about those persons, for example, who believe in the concept of God and they say that when they call upon God, whatever the name be, but when they pray every night or in the morning or if they call upon God for help, that they receive that help. And if you're saying that God does not exist, then how do you explain those persons? I say God did not exist. Mm -hmm. I'm explaining to you who is this man called God. Mm -hmm. That's every man that you see walking around on earth and every woman that you see walking around on earth, they are God. Mm -hmm. and they're goddesses. But the idea okay. of a god in the sky you're saying doesn't exist. Hey, that's... No. <laughs> <laughs> no. The, the incorporal god in the sky does not exist. Now, what I'm saying to you, you asked me about people praying mm -hmm. to God, right? Yes. And they get results by doing that. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. All right, you can take that same person can pray to, to a telephone book and put all his spiritual power <laughs> and trust in his telephone book, and that telephone book will give him the same thing. <laughs> Your ancestors, then, our ancestors, the ancient Egyptians, they didn't bow down to no God and carry on like that. They didn't do all of that because they were in tune spiritually with their third eye connected in the universe. How do you think, now listen to this, Ancobia. Our ancestors, the ancient Egyptians, I'm going to show you how big their thinking was. They thought of and figured out the mathematics that would create a pyramid 450 stories tall. Okay? They figured out the building of the Sphinx, mm -hmm. one city block long, six stories tall. They had big minds. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. You got that? Yes. They were thinking big because, you know why? They had no religion to block them. I'll show you what religions would do. Now watch this now. From our ancestors, ancient Egyptians, thinking big, building the pyramids, bringing forth mathematics to build this pyramid that's still standing there in Africa and Egypt today, still with the Sphinx still standing there in Africa today. Mm -hmm. And guess what the peoples, with an S on the end, has been reduced down to? 
they've been reduced down to a Bible. People, oh, they say, oh, the Bible, you mean tell me you came from your ancestors with this big mind of thinking and creating and receiving from the universe the mathematics to build a pyramid, the great pyramid and the Sphinx and bring forth all uh, civilization. They were used as human instruments to bring forth all civilization. You mean to tell me you're going to tell me about a Bible? You mean your mind is just reduced down to a Bible that's full of lies? You see what I'm talking about? Yes. That's, that's incredible. You know, something I just want to ask you here. Mm-hmm. When I was younger and I used to go to church, I remember I was reading the Psalms one day. I think I was about 16 or so. And I came across this Psalms. I have my Bible here. I had to go out and buy this Bible just because you were doing this. I was doing this show with you. I don't own a Bible. I had one when I was about uh, age, I think 11 years old. And don't ask me what happened to it. But I had to go out and buy a Bible just in case anybody called in and had anything they wanted to take out of the Bible. Anyway, Psalms 82. It says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of of the wicked and then he goes on to say i have said you are gods and all of you are children of the most high but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes arise o god judge the earth for thou shalt inherit all nations and i used to say to the elder christians like you know it says here that we are all gods but they used to say no 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 that's not true that's incorrect i said no it says here sam's 82, number 6, it says, you are all gods. I'm telling you the same thing. Yes, and and I used to say, but how can we worship God when the Bible says here, you are all gods? And the first line says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judgeth among the gods. Well, who are these other gods that he's judging amongst? Do you get me? Right. Yeah. So you have to, in other words, your program that you're bringing forth in Birmingham, England, Mm -hmm. at this very moment, should provoke thought mm. and this is what I'm about I give lectures around the country I give radio interviews like I'm giving one now yes. to provoke thought I want you to begin to think yes. see, I, don't want, I don't want to be nobody's leader you see because I allow people to, to follow me I don't want no followers because if I allow you to do that then I would dehumanize you mm. you were not born to follow no man and no woman Yes. okay and I don't want any of your money so <laughs> I'm not doing this for followers or money or whatever the case might be. I'm doing this because I want the African community to wake up. Now, you got a pencil and pen there? Yes. Write Bible out on mm. paper. Mm-hmm. You, you got it down? Yes. Take the two B's away. What you got left? I-L. What you got? I-L-E. I-L-E. Put the I between the L and the E. What you got? Lie. That's what the Bible is. Okay, you're saying that the Bible is a, a lie. The Bible is a lie. You're in tune to the On a Level Talk Show with Ancobia. On the telephone lines all the way down there in Chicago, I'm speaking with Professor Walter Williams. You want to open the phone lines right about now? Birmingham, 678-6666. That is 0121. In case you're outside of Birmingham, you may be in London or somewhere else. 678-6666. Call in and speak with Professor Walter Williams. We are asking the question, who is this man called God? So far, Walter Williams says that God is an abstract idea that needs human spirituality to give it life. He also says, outside of religion, God has no power. That the Bible is a dead book, and you give life to the Bible by believing in it. Professor does not believe in God, but he's also not an atheist. Um, he says the concept we have of God is a male God. So it's only dealing with the male aspect of creation. He's saying that men and women are gods, all right? So when if most of us walk around saying we're just normal, average human beings, if that, he's saying, no, you are, in fact, a God, God woman, God man. And you've just heard him say there that the Bible is a lie. Do you extend that lie to all religious books, all Professor? Relig- any book that is connected to a religion is based off of mythology. Mm-hmm. Because the religion itself is mythology. Mm-hmm. No human on earth was born with religion. Nowhere on your birth certificate it says that you're a Christian, a Muslim, a Hebrew Israelite, a Jew, a, a Buddhist, a Zoroastrian, a Hindu, any of those religions, it's not on your birth certificate, okay? So all humans were born with life. 
not a religion. Yes. You see, so, at an early innocent age, your parents introduce you to a religion because your grandparents introduce your parents to a religion and your great grandparents introduce your grandparents to a religion. So it goes back, back, back. So it has to stop right now. Yes. With you or the listeners out there that can understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You see? Because if you don't, it's going to continue, continue to roll on from generation to generation. See? So therefore you have to realize that all of humanity has been told a lie. Yes. Okay? You've been fooled. When did this come into being? When was humanity given this idea of a God up in the sky, particularly a white God, some white man sitting up there watching over the whole of creation? Um, yeah. When did that concept come about? Repeat that again. When did the concept of God come about for humanity, particularly the idea of a white God? Okay. Most, most of us assume God is white, unfortunately. That's correct. That's right. Especially as a Christian. Now, in my book, The Historical Origin of Christianity, I walk you through the historical progression yes. of how this image that we know today as Jesus the Christ came about and how Christianity came about. Okay? Now, the image of Ptolemy I, called yes. Lagi, called Sota, the word S O T E R means Savior. Ptolemy I Lagi was the successor of Alexander the Greek after Alexander died. Mm. Uh, coming into Egypt in 323, he died. Mm -hmm. Okay, he came in Egypt. The Greeks came into Egypt in 332 BC under Alexander's mm -hmm. uh, leadership, and Alexander uh, and and the Greeks knew that in order to rule Egypt, they had <laughs> to get control of the ancient Egyptian sacred society. Yes. Okay. So, sacred but, uh, or secret? Sacred. Okay, sacred. Yes. Yeah, not secret, but sacred society. Mm -hmm. And Alexander died, and in, in three. Uh, uh, 23 B.C. E. after living in Egypt for nine years, and his successor, his army general, told me one like he called Sotar, the word S-O-T-E-R means savior, and he took over the throne of Egypt, and he tried to get himself admitted into the ancient Egyptian divine sacred society. But what I'm trying to, you know, rather than go through that whole, the whole thing, progression yeah. of how Christianity came about, to answer your question, the image that we see today as a Jesus the Christ, it's nothing but the image of Ptolemy I, like the successor of Alexander the Greek. Okay? Okay. And in and, and my book, I'll, I'll walk you through that progression all through the council meetings, Council of Nicaea of I, uh, 325, the Council of Constantinople I, 381, okay. the Council of, of Ephesus 431, the Council of Chalcedon 451, etc., etc. Well, let's just hold it there. When we come back after this news break, we're going to pick up that point. Okay. Okay. This is the On A Level Talk show, talking to Professor Walter Williams, asking a question, who is this man called God? Yes, Hotep, join in in today's discussion. Call the studio on 0121-678-6666. No, no, go get, go get a pen, go get a pen, say it again. Call the studio on 0121-678-6666. Or if that number is busy, then try this one. 0121-678, get a pen that works, start again. 0121-678-6022. Welcome back to the On A Level Talk Show. Welcome back, Professor Walter Williams. Thank you. Now, for those of you who just tuned in to the On A Level Talk Show, today we are answering the question, who is this man, in quotes, man, called God, in quotes, question mark, who is this man called God? Um, Professor Walter Williams is going to help us to understand who is this man called God. And just before the break, we were talking about how the image of God was created, how the idea of God came about. Join in the discussion. Let us know whether you agree. Do you believe in God? If so, does God work for you in your life? Does God help you? Um, call in, speak to the professor, put any questions that you have about God to him. I know this is very, very difficult for a lot of people to get to grips with because they feel that if they dismiss the concept of God, if they get rid of the idea of a God, somebody up there in the heaven watching over all of creation, that it means their religion is going to fall to the wayside. Is that correct, Professor? Well, yes. Uh, you see, religion, a human being doesn't need. The religion needs the human being mm -hmm. to give it life. Without the human being believing in these various religions, the religion will be dead. See, so therefore, they were taught wrong by their 
mothers and fathers who were taught wrong by their grandparents and mm-hmm. their grandparents were taught wrong by their parents and so forth and so on. Yes. So when you come out of your mother's womb, your mother and father should have taught you something about your own humanity and never taught you about a religion. Then you won't have a religion today to be confused. Yes. Because all this stuff is confusing the psyche of humanity, you see? Now, let's go back. You asked me about the image mm. that you that we know today as a Jesus the Christ. Where did well, I was talking more about God because we dealt with Jesus last week. I was talking more about how did the concept of God come about? Well, I'm telling you, i got to tell you that. Mm. See, this all is incorporated. Mm. The image was created from the image of totally one, the successor of Alexander the Greek, after Alexander died in 332 BCE. Okay, the image of Ptolemy, which there were 14 Ptolemy rulers. The word Ptolemy means a ruler of Greek rule of ancient Egypt. So from that one Ptolemy, the first Ptolemy, Ptolemy one, like he called Sota, that's where the image that we know today as this Christ image came about because the ancient Egyptian, he found an ancient Egyptian priest society in Memphis, Egypt, who took two of their deities after this Ptolemy asked them to make his image into a god. They took two of their ancient Egyptian image, Osiris and Ra, the Apus bull of Ra, and made it a composite out of the two names. Osiris and Apus, and came out with Osirapus and gave that name to this Ptolemy. And if you read my book, throughout the progression of the history that I put in the book, it will show you where I'm following this Serapus image all the way up into it became the Christ at the Council of Ephesus. This is all history. It has nothing to do with what you believe, nothing to do with traditional theology is teaching you, they're not going to teach you this. You have to get it from history. You have to step on the outside of these various religions and learn about the history of these religions, the history of the literature that's connected to these various religions, etc., etc. The moment that you step inside, you can kiss yourself goodbye. Now, Christianity, I'm leading up to something. Christianity was only practiced in the double walled city of Constantinople, known today as Istanbul, Turkey, at the world's first Christian church ever built on earth, the Hagia Sophia, the Church of Hagia Sophia. And that was built in Northeast Africa. Today it is misnomer and called the Middle East. Okay? So now, when that seat of Christianity, I'm jumping now, but my books will reveal all this, that when the seat of Christianity coming out of the Hagia Sophia, was moved into Europe, you see, in the 15th century, when it was moved into Europe, in the Vatican, Mm -hmm. which was built over the catacombs on on the outskirts of Rome, and they built this Vatican that's still over there today, a walled city, which is nothing but a replica of the Hagia Sophia, which is, they call it the St. Peter's Basilica, and the city of Constantinople. It's nothing but a replica over there in Rome, on the outskirts of Rome today, called the Vatican. And this is done in the 15th century. And from the 15th century, coming forward into the year 208, what people are getting is Western Christianity, the practice of Western Christianity. And with the practice and the coming of Western Christianity in the 15th century, you get this image that was unleashed, this monster, that was unleashed on all of humanity called Jesus the Christ, and that's where you get it from. Okay. Okay, so you're calling Jesus a monster. Yes. <laughs> okay, why do you say that? Why do you say Jesus is a monster? Why? Because there's never been a man that ever walked to earth in human form of any race, creed, or color by the name of Jesus Christ. And if anybody wants to challenge that, I'll give you the $5,000 as an award to prove and use the discipline of history to do that, to write up on paper how, when, and where a character by the name of Jesus Christ walked this earth as a human being. can't be done because when an individual go and sit in church, and these different churches around the world, they go in and sit in the pews of these churches, they go in with a belief. But how does that make Jesus, even if you say he never existed, how does that make him a monster? Because look what it's done to mankind. Jesus or Christianity? You can't separate the two. Mm -hmm. You can't be a Christian without being a worshiper of this Christ image. Do you 
or are you of the belief that for black people living in the West that if we were to truly empower ourselves we would have to come away from the religions of Christianity and Islam? You have to come away from all religions. If you want to empower yourself, get back to your own power. See, right today, people who practice religion are nothing but religious slaves out of yeah. ignorance. They don't know any better. Yes. Okay? Because they don't know who they are as a human being. Once you find out who you are as a human being, you'll find out you don't need a religion. The religion needs you to give but, it power. But, but how do people, because, I mean, it's so... It's so easier said than done. Get back to yourself, find yourself, know yourself. I mean, how do people actually do that? Especially if someone has been, you know, they're now 47 years of age, for example, or they're, they're 37 and they've followed a particular religion all of their life. How do they now walk away from that religion, particularly if they feel it's helping their lives and then, as you say, get back to knowing themselves? All right, let me, let me tell you this. Mm. And Kobe is this. I want everybody to listen to this. If you are a Christian, I'm not telling you not to be a Christian. I have no right to tell you not to be a Christian because I didn't tell you to be one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you believe in that, fine. You can interject your own personal spirituality into a dog. That's your own personal preference. So I'm not telling you not to believe in a religion. I'm not trying to take your religion away, no matter what it is. I have no right to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a, a human right to believe whatever you want to believe. You want to hold on to this, fine. You know, the only thing I can do is come on air. I write a book and explain to you about the historical progression of how these religions came about and how these different images came about, etc., etc. That's the only thing I can do. Now, if a person, how do they walk away from that? Is that a light bulb has to come on inside of your mind, mm -hmm. inside of your psychic, okay? This light bulb say, bam, oh, my goodness, I was wrong. I, mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Start investigating. Yes. You see, if you sit up there and don't want to investigate and fight, see, you have a you have a right to change. That's what Barack Obama ran on change. You have the human right to change. If you want to uh, change and walk away from these religions, you can do that. Don't be ashamed to do that. Don't be ashamed to think. I'm trying to provoke thought inside of your inside of your thinking. Mm. I don't want any of your money. I don't want you to follow me. I don't want you to buy my books. You don't have to ever buy my books. Don't even worry about that. Because I don't make a living selling books. Mm. Okay? So what I'm saying to the individual out there, whether it's an African or anybody of any race, people, color, you don't need a religion because no human on earth was born with a religion. That they want to fight that and fight me about it, come on, I'm ready to fight. And <laughs> the phone lines of gone already okay welcome to the on a level talk show who am i speaking to greetings tread yes wow greetings rash tread you know i was just about to ask the professor here yes for those persons who follow the religion of rastafarianism uh -huh. and who see Haley selassie as a god you know what does he think about that but anyway i'll get to that in just a moment go ahead no. and ask your question because the phone lines are going no problem. Well, really and truly, a lot of what the professor say, you know, technically and true, really and truly, I, I tend to agree with him. Mm. Over 30 years, mm. us in the community, a certain amount of us in the community did already come to a conclusion that God is man and God is his woman. Yes. That the Bible had its shortcomings and a lot of us were ostracized and were given a lot of fight by our own community faith. And over the years now, I think a lot of the community is beginning to wake up and people are beginning to realize, yes, there are some shortcomings with religion, and like the professor said, religion is something that was constructed by man in a way of helping to control masses. But Tred, what about the idea that Professor Walter Williams, as we're saying to people, yeah. throw away the Bible, do away with the Bible. Now, as a Rastafarian yourself, uh -huh. you rely upon that Bible, don't you, to prove the divinity of Haley Selassie? Right, well, I use the Bible to help you improve the divinity of His Majesty, but not just the Bible alone. We use other books as well, secular books, historical so, books. books so, if you were to, so if you were to throw away the Bible then, could you still prove the divinity of Haley Selassie? We do that, that is okay, correct. Even okay. if I never had the Bible, I can still say, yeah man, I can look okay. at that man and say, yeah man, I can see the God aspect in him, I can see the Goddess aspect in Empress Menin. Yes. But at the same time, I will apply that to myself because Haile Selassie has already told us that what he's done, we can do also and do even greater. We just need to look into ourselves. Okay. Is there a particular question you want to ask the professor whilst the, these phone lines are going like crazy here? Well, really and truly, you know, he just had some of his historical beast. I couldn't say I have a real question for him. Yes. He said that 
I endorse a lot of what you were saying because I heard him talking about God and goddesses and I heard you mention about Psalms in the Bible. Yeah, like, Psalms 82. Like God's and we are created a little lower than the angels. There's a few instances in the Bible where it does point that out. Yes. And like you say, the God in man and the goddess in woman is what we need to touch into because we weren't born with religion, we were born with that insight and in talk about the pineal gland, that is what awakened our deep spiritual essence within man and each human being of it is just okay. that much better than others simply because of the way how they address themselves with life and with nature because you've got to be in harmony with the earth okay Trent, i'm yeah. going to move on a bit because we have some calls coming through um, okay yes. give thanks hold up reasoning empowerment for the community with ancobia on 98.7 news style radio okay hello caller thank you for holding hello who am i speaking to Marky. to Mackie. Mackie. Okay, what would you like to say to the professor? Well, there are certain things that he's talking about that directly I agree with, but at the same time, when he's talking about the Bible, saying, saying that it's a myth, right? Mm. Well, when I was growing up, my mom t always told me, yeah, the Bible is basic instructions before leaving Earth. Yeah? That's what Bible stands for. Saying... So therefore, now when that's my what you mean, she turned the the letters of the Bible yeah into that. Okay, so it doesn't so, stand for that. She turned it into that. Yeah, okay. basic instructions before leaving Earth. Okay. Now I'm not saying everything in the Bible, yeah, is fact, yeah, because it's man written. Mm. But it's just like a normal story. If I tell you a story and it carries down the line, you understand? Okay, it's gonna change. People's gonna add bits and bobs but the story goes something like that okay well let's get the professor in here hello yes hello. professor walter williams yes okay you've just heard what our caller mikey said about the bible see mm. like i was telling you before about the bible and mm -hmm. also last week about the bible if i asked an individual such as your caller before this young man mm -hmm. um can you tell me what year was the first Bible ever printed on planet Earth? What country was it printed in? What city in that country was it printed in? What alphabet was used to print that Bible? Uh, who formulated that Bible to be printed using whose material and what was the orthodox name of it? That's my question. If you're going to talk about a Bible, you should know something about the Bible. Could you answer any of those questions, caller? Yeah, well, I know directly said the Bible. Saying, was it, I think it's in Hebrew. Right, it's in the Arabic language. I it was written. The, no, 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 I no, don't. Hold it, hold it, hold but, it, hold it. I asked you a question. Eh. When was the first Bible ever printed on planet Earth? What country was it printed in? What city was it printed in? And what alphabet was used to print it? And who formulated the Bible using whose materials to formulate it? And what was the orthodox name of it? I couldn't tell you that, so I don't okay, read it then, through it so much. Okay, okay, then, listen, listen, we can, mm -hmm. we can end this and go to another call. You know nothing about the Bible. You're quoting something and reading something you know nothing about. What do you mean I don't know nothing about the Bible? You have to ask me right? these questions. You say you don't know. I go to church, rude boy. Yeah, okay, I so go to church. See, and wonderful. And my, okay, and my, and my, my family, see, has been grown grown up and brought me up within the church. That's you the understand? problem. That's what <laughs> yeah, you say that's, that's the problem, but at the same the time, I, I know for myself and I do think for myself, I'm not disagreeing directly with certain things that you're saying. Okay. You understand me, right? Uh, I agree with certain things that you're actually saying, okay. right? But when you're saying that directly, like God is a man, or not even God, Jesus then is a monster, right? Oh, correct, me, absolutely. To me, directly, you shouldn't directly put it as a color, as a white man up in the sky and rare, 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 because at the same time... He, yeah, he didn't do that. It's, it's my understanding that it's the European Christians who have given us this concept of a Jesus Christ. Correct. Rima asked a brilliant question last week to the Christians out there. Why is it that the Bible mm. doesn't address any of our problems that we face as black people on this planet? Correct. The Bible but, doesn't even address us. It's talking about Tom, Dick and Harry but it never gets to us. So there are some serious things that we have to question. Now, we haven't been enslaved in the Caribbean and in the mm. Americas, colonized throughout Africa. We've been given a concept of a white God, 
and a white Jesus. Yeah. What that okay. white God and white Jesus does is act as a political tool for Europeans to control us. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying. Mm. But at the same time, yeah, God made him, God made himself, yeah, within us, basically, within his image. Okay, yeah? thank you, you caller, then. We have to agree to disagree, but thank All you. Right. I do um, give thanks for the call. All right. Okay, bye. Let's go to bye. some more callers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Call the On A Level Talk Show on 0121 678 or 0121 678 Hello, caller. Good, good, good uh, evening. Yes, who am I speaking to, please? It's uh, P from Nichols. Okay, what would you like to say to the professor? Uh, just that um, when they're talking about all these different religions and, uh, and, and you know, the, 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 who's the, who's the uh, forefront and of the religion. You don't think about where they're coming from, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. This mm. country would put, you know, what they believe in, like, I don't know, uh, the Far East or something like that, they all have a, you know, they've all got somebody stamped there who they believe in. Now, if you go back in, 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 to, to, to where you originated from, you, you won't hear about the calling, the calling like, Jesus Christ, son, unless it's a minority. Look, you know, you have to go back into history and find out where you're coming from to find out who is your, you, you know, what would I call, who is the person who, you know, you can put up there and, and, and sit down and, you know, actually say, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do today because so and so, you know, like the father, the son, I the think, Holy Ghost, I, like think that. The, I think the professor is saying, though, that you don't put your divinity into any person. Am I right, professor? That's right. You know, divinity in yourself. Mm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, right? You can you can pray to somebody, but that don't mean if you don't want to do it. You know, if it's in your 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 body says no, you're not gonna you're you're not gonna do something. It's self. You're you're self motivated, so it's inner self that's telling you you need to pray, but you need to have something there but to focus you... on to get that inner self of you to do what you want to do. Okay, so the professor's... You diminish your, your own humanity by, by praying to something else or somebody else. Why should you do that? You're diminishing your own self, your own humanity. Well, just well, well, greatest what you're praying to. Well, in this country, they've got like stone engine things like that, druids and things like that, yeah? Mm. And then you've got all these different religions, agents, uh, in, you Agent know, Zwong, British and all that. Yeah. And then you've got your, yourself who's looking at it and saying, that's not right, you know. And when you sit down and you hear certain things come on the TV and radio and you see certain things, you know, which you can't believe, you know, it, it, it's actually put there for you to study, if you know what I mean. Yes. Okay, so, Cola, is that all you wanted to say? That's right. Okay. Thank you very much for your call. Okay, I'll call you. Okay, keep listening. Have a good night. Yes, you too, lovely. The Under Level Talk Show with me and Kobe. I wonder who's going to call up and try and take that challenge and claim their £3,000. I am talking to Professor Walter Williams. The topic is, who is this man called God? He says, God is an abstract idea that needs human spirituality to give it life. Outside of religion, God has no power. The Bible, he says, is a dead book. You give life to the Bible by believing it, and I take it that that goes across to all religious books. Correct. The Professor Walter Williams says he does not believe in God, but he's not an atheist. I know that there's a higher power than there's, Walter Yes, Williams. there's a higher power, you're saying. And yeah. you're saying that man and woman is God. Now, that's a very interesting concept, isn't it? To move from seeing yourself as a human being some vulnerable human being to seeing yourself as a god and goddess as Rash Tread was just saying there. You know why, uh, Ancobia? Mm. Because man can create. Mm -hmm. And goddess can create. Mm -hmm. You see? We are little creators. Yes. It has nothing to do but we cannot create the stars, the sky, the sun, the moon, yes. air, water, earth, vegetation, animals and humanity. We can't create that. Okay, let's Only go to... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll let you just finish that in just a moment after we take this call, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello, who am I speaking to? Hi, my name is Maria. Hi, Maria. What would you like to say to Professor Walter Williams today? Okay. Um, just to say, I, I agree with uh, many, many of the things that he has 
he's talking about today mm -hmm. and um because i've come from a post-christian background where i used to go to church and uh, for many years mm -hmm. i came away from that and it was very much um a freeing of the mind to be able to question because mm. um, when you're in Christianity, you do, you're not allowed to question. So do you right? follow any religion now? The religion I follow is the understanding that there is a higher being and there is a respect as a human being for that higher being. Right. But I also believe that higher being is a part of us too. Mm. Yeah, there is a God within us, the God in, in goddesses and goddess in Correct. man. Um, a question I have is why do you think we are afraid to see the God in us? Because you have been trained that way. You see, the religions don't train you to look within yourself. Okay? okay. They train you to look outside of yourself at what they're telling you what to believe in. You see? So therefore, that makes you a religious slave. Because you don't know anything about your own personal humanity. I see, and you, the words that you spoke, young lady, were all true. That's what I'm trying to provoke in the minds of the listeners. Absolutely. Excellent. I've got one other question as well. Have you heard of the book Conversation with God by Donald Neil Walsh? I have. I've got all three copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got the first one. What did you make of it in the way that he questioned God and made us see that we are part of God and we designed our own life? Okay. Well, let me let the professor answer that first. First, I haven't read the book. Yes. Okay. Have you heard and, about uh, it? We are, we, are, we are gods and goddesses ourselves. You know that we have the power. Don't give that power away. Yes. No religion or no image on a cross or otherwise. Yes. You see, you have to divest yourself from all religions. You don't need a religion in your life because you wasn't born with a religion. And once you understand I was not born with a religion, go into the bathroom, look in your, in your mirror, and say to yourself, I was not born with a religion. I was born with an indwelling spiritual birthright, which is my life spirit that's indwelling inside of me at this very moment that I'm looking at myself. Okay. And do that, you can divest yourself from all religion. Okay, and just to answer your question quickly before we move on, Caller, um, I did enjoy the books. I really did enjoy the books. I thought they were very good. However, I do have issues with European New Age spirituality. Mm. Um, and I think we have to be very careful. I think anything that takes us or removes us further away as black people from dealing with our African culture mm. and ancient spiritual systems, I do think we have to be very careful with it. There's a documentary called The Century of Self. And there's one particular episode where they show you how the government hired some of the top psychologists and psychiatrists to infiltrate the New Age movement. And it's a powerful documentary when you see what they did to try and change the message so that it would have no kind of politics in it so people wouldn't see that they have any kind of responsibility in the society that they lived in so, the, mm. so that all power would still lie with the government and you have this airy-fairy kind of spirituality. So I do have issues with European New Age spirituality, but the books are interesting. Yeah, All right. I feel the same way. Okay, give thanks for the call. Thank you. Oh, Take care. Oh, bye -bye. Okay. The level Talk Show. Whew, it's so difficult for us to have discussions around religion. Very difficult indeed. It's not something that's easily done because we've been, we've grown up with religions all of our lives. One of the things I now want to look at with Professor Walter Williams is women and religion. I always find it interesting that when I look at the, the Bible or the, the Quran, you don't see any of the books written by women. Even when you look at the Trinity, it's man, no, it's God the Father and the Holy Ghost and the child Jesus. Man, man, man. Correct. And I just find it so strange that the woman isn't in it, that growing up, everything we know as women about God has been told to us, everything to, anything to do with religion. It's some man telling us how we must be, how we must dress, how we must behave, how we must conduct ourselves, what is and what isn't a virtuous woman. And I just think maybe it's time we start to look at some of these issues. That's true, because all of your religions, all your man-made religions, created by man, uh, have a God as man. They all male dominated, you see? Now, when the first religion ever created on earth was Christianity, okay? Or the Christ image, okay? And that was done over in 
North, East Africa, and in Egypt. And my book will attest to that. It will walk you through the progression of how that history came about. Okay? Now, over in Egypt and over there in that area of North, East Africa, you'll find the relationship, the cultural relationship between a man and a woman. That's the reason why you hear me say, Mayat Hotep. Don't ever say Hotep because it's one-sided. Then you're giving the man. You are following that line yourself, giving that man credit. No. Where's the female? The female has got to be in there to give it balance. So our ancestors gave in their culture and in their practice, they gave the female balance, gave her recognition. They gave her equal with them, and he was equal with her. See, there's cosmic balance there. But now, when the religion, Christianity, moved out of Africa, out of Constantinople, Northeast Africa, out of Turkey, out of the Hagia Sophia, into Europe in the 15th century, and this monster was unleashed on the world called Jesus the Christ, then you had this father, male, son, male, and he took the woman and called and said, the Holy Ghost. You see, the same thing, what you just got to mentioning. You see, so that eradicated and eliminated the woman. You go into Islam. Here you have, it's a male-dominated religion. Mm -hmm. The practice of Islam, the men against the women. The women, they got to veil themselves. They got to wrap up like mummies and have slits where they can see without getting run over or bumping into a tree. And 125 degree Fahrenheit weather, they got to put all these robes and things on. The man, he walk around with shorts and sandals on and a little, little t-shirt. He's comfortable, but this woman's got to be miserable. And she's treated like a dog, okay? They kill her. They do everything to her. They maim her. They do whatever they want to do with her. In other words, she's just nothing but a disposable piece of toilet tissue, so to speak. You know, it's interesting. I was um, out on the streets this weekend interviewing our African brothers and sisters from the continent, mm -hmm. um, from all over the continent. And, you know, I was shocked that a lot of the, the sisters wouldn't talk. The African women wouldn't talk. The men did all the talking and they said, no, the men have spoken for us. I'm like, no, but you have a voice. Where's your voice? That's correct. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes, who am I speaking to? Yeah, speaking to Paul. Paul, what yeah. would you like to say? I, I would just like to say um, to the professor mm. that, you know, where he's calling Jesus a monster. Um, you know, when you read the, the, the scriptures, oh, my goodness. you know, where does he say in the scriptures that he slaughtered, that he killed anybody? Well, he died that he, for humanity. What proof that do you have that this Jesus character lived as a human being walking the earth? What does it say that? It, 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 it's recorded in um, um, a, 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 by a Jewish um, historian, a book called Josephus. Oh, please, don't give me Josephus. Huh? Listen, Josephus was supposed to have lived and born 37 A.D. and died 100 A.D. with a question mark. And that's 37 A.D. is supposed to be the first century. It is the first century. And this Josephus was supposed to have been a Jewish historian. If you spell the name Josephus, it's spelled with a J. In the first century, that was no J. You don't get a J until 1630 when he took the I, the English I, letter I, and brought it down below the line and put a curl on it. That's when you get a J. So now you got to come to me better with a Josephus. And then when you go and get an encyclopedia, a Pia Judaica, a set of Encyclopedia Judaica, which Jews, Jewish scholars have written. And you look up Joseph on J O S I P P O N, you will find that in that article and section of the book, they will tell you, the Jews will tell you there's never been a Josephus, okay? And then in the first century, there was no religion called Judaism, okay? There was no religion called true, Judaism true, in the first true, century. Professor, true Christianity. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. Okay? No, 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 Paul, 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 I think with who? we're saying it's a relationship, but I think been. it's always been a, a, a religion. I'm not, I'm not talking even, even, even talking about Western, we're talking even from way back. Way when, back when? when? Jesus came on way the back planet. when? Way back Give when? Give me some dates. Don't tell me way back and then I'm going to accept that. Give me some dates. When I talk, I give dates. Yeah, you, you give dates, right? Well, give but me your, your, your dates don't add up to what the Bible talks about. 
See, you, you, can, you can talk about, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I know dates, right? But I, I know Jesus for myself. Fine. No I know his word and I know him for myself. I speak to him, he speaks to me. Oh, good. Well, no, right? Good. I have a relationship with God. Okay, a true so Christian has a relationship. Say hi. It's not a religion. Okay, I got you. Thanks so right? much it's for the It's a call. true relationship. I got you, brother. So we know the Creator and He knows us. Okay. You got it. Yeah. You know, how, how, can, uh, how can you say that, you know, he, he's, he's a monster? When he created everything, who? right? True, true. Who, Jesus started in the Garden of Eden when oh Adam goodness. sold out the planet oh. and the universe. Please to save give me a break. You need to go to a church and get you a pulpit and say all that. Okay, this is the wrong platform for that. No, it isn't. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. Um, your thoughts there on what Paul had to say? I have no thoughts. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul is confused. Okay. Okay. 0121 678 Call and speak with Professor Walter Williams. He's answering the question, who is this man called God? Obviously, Paul, you know, was upset there. And I can understand, actually, he's upset because he sees Jesus Christ as his Savior. And um, he hears you calling his Savior, his Lord, a monster. Right. Unleashed on the world, on the innocent world. Because Christianity was not practiced nowhere in Africa, but in the double-walled city of Constantinople. Outside of that city, Christianity was not practiced. Mm. No place in Africa. Mm. Only in the double-walled city of Constantinople in Northeast Africa, known today as the Middle East, known today as Istanbul, Turkey, in the world's first Christian church, the Hagia Sophia which was built in the 6th century. In all of your travels, Professor, throughout the world, have you ever gone to a place where you've seen Christianity or Islam benefit black people? Mm -mm. All you have, I don't have to go to those places. All you have to do is look around the world. Mm. Look around the world. He's showing me one religion is benefiting humanity. Mm. None. They're all in chaos. They're fighting and killing and maiming and raping and robbing and lying and stealing and so forth and so on. They're all this is religious turmoil. I think one of the things that black people find it hard to get to grips with when it comes to religion is because we've been given the religion, we've been given a book and we take this book as being rooted in historical facts and we say, well, we can trace it back to this date and what's not. We often fail to look at how men came together and put those books together and gave us those books, particularly those of us coming out of the Caribbean and the Americas who were enslaved by Europeans, those of us who have lived on the continent of Africa and have been colonized by Europeans, we don't seem to understand white supremacy and how white supremacy and religion, Christianity, go hand in hand. Correct. And see, they got to understand and realize that their minds have been colonized. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, you go back into your ancient history, an ancient Egyptian history, world's first and oldest civilization on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. You take that time era. The ancient Egyptians, you can go back 10,000 B.C., up until the time the Greeks came in, into Egypt, which they had a civilization in existence for over almost 10,000 years, mm -hmm. okay? Now, there was no turmoil around the world. Only when that European came over there in Africa. Mm -hmm. And the Arab man as well. And where? And the Arab man. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. You see, when this European came into Africa, into Egypt, on the Alexander the Greek, that's where the turmoil began, the chaos began. Okay. Because, yes, we have, we have some more callers on the line. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, caller, thank you for holding. Yeah, that's no problem. Who am I speaking to, please? You're speaking to Mikey. Okay, Mikey, you're calling back again? No, 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 it's a different Mikey. Oh, is that, okay. No I, have, uh, no, I haven't called back at all today. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, my well, first, it's, it's... My first time. It's my first time. It's your first wow. time. Okay, what would you yeah, like to say, uh, Mikey? Yeah, big up the professor. We need more, we need more of you. You know, we need more of you. And, and it, Thank you, sir. It, uh, 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 the reason I say that is even now, how I converse with you, I'm not really conversing in my proper tongue. So you can see that the brainwashing even now has affected us. You know, so mm -hmm. what you, what, what he's actually saying is he's saying to people, who open up on your own mind and make up on your own And then we'll come to the, the conclusion that I am, the, I am the same. I'm 45 years old. I mm -hmm. was brought up like most people believing in, God, you know, and our concept was if you turn the word God backwards, it's spelled dog, you know, 
and 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 so we we long time ago we leave the church yes. we leave the church and we leave the church because we could see that it was hypocrit- hypocritical and the sad thing about what made us see was our actual history that we were studying in school mm. you know and what happens now with religion inverted commas um, with speech marks is that it controls everybody correct mm. Who, who persists to say, right, I am going to join this church or that church. We as Rastas, because I'm a Rasta, and one of the main reasons I become a Rasta, mm-hmm. because we couldn't follow no, what anybody telling me to worship this blue-eyed bland, bland eye God. And, mm-hmm. you know, from the time of creation and the time of Christianity, all Christians and religious people say, is you must have faith. Yes. So yes. when them kill with true slavery, you must have faith. Yes. yes, when 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 we make with speeches and you know um, Mark was making speeches and Malcolm X make them speeches and them killing we left right and center and you go to the churches them still saying it we must have faith. This is the brainwashing tool that they use because everything that you read in the Bible you can never actually find anything um, that you can relate to and say right let me check this out and you can find evidence. Yes, right. it, I've it, always it, wondered as I was saying earlier one of the things I wonder with the Bible with the Quran. For us as a people who've been suffering so much on this planet, catching so much hell all over the planet, why isn't there any instruction on there to teach me how to deal with my oppressors okay. other than turn my cheek and get my face boxed? You know, as, as, as a black man, okay. as a black man, mm. me, me have to say exactly what you say, is mm. that it, what I have seen growing up in Europe and not growing up in my motherland is that them, you, religion is the tool where them first you see slavery. slavery. Mm-hmm. That's right. what they first use. Okay. And it's the same tool they're using now because it's, it's exactly what you said. Look at, if you're even going to black churches, then yes. still have pictures white of Jesus a blue, on a blue, the wall. You know, in- when I was in Ghana, I mean, Ghana is a country, they have churches like all over the place. And there's yeah, yeah. a white Jesus all over the place. And Ashwa Kwesi wants us, when your enemy becomes your deity, you are in trouble. Well, yes, you I'm, are I'm, in I'm, trouble. I'm, Let me I'm just let the I'm, professor come inside here, uh, yeah, Mikey, please. I wrote that in my book. The historical origin of Islam. I've got it. I've got your book in front of me, The Historical Origin of Islam and The Historical Origin of Christianity. Yeah. Because don't get me wrong, you know, anything that someone is doing to uplift people, you know, mm. just like Obara, mm. Barack Obama, mm. you know, to me, he is, he is more important to me than Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. He's more important to me than God because he's right here, right now, and I'm going to see the difference and love and, and, and experience the difference when I'm going to make. Okay. Mikey, thank you for your call. Yeah, thanks very much, man. Keep up the way. But okay. first, we need, we, need, we need to send our youth to your university, you know? Okay. <laughs> uh, one year in Birmingham, you know? Okay. All yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Okay, now, take you know, care. Crazy. He's using my quote out of my book now. That's your quote that Ashwa Crazy That's uses. Quote. That's right. You read it in the introduction. Yes. Okay, well, let's just take a quick, quick break, and then we're going to come back and okay. wrap up the show, Professor. Okay. Okay. The On The Level Talk Show. May I tell you, the fear is a serious thing, you know. And we see that a lot of religion get perpetuated and get get popular because of fear. And we see that a lot of people now is going to church. Not because they love Jesus Christ, but because they fear that they're going to burn in hell. It's not the love of Jesus Christ why they're going to church, but that this concept that Jesus Christ is going to send you to a bottomless pit and burn you in hell for a thousand years. You can just imagine that. A bottomless pit. Which part is bottomless pit there? And then I go down there. Because I know that I can overcome all hell too. Because we have been overcoming hell for thousands of years. And we're going to overcome hell still. So we have said to the people them in our Rasta, just take time. Don't make fear get all of you and make you do the wrong thing. Don't make fear get all of you and do the wrong thing. The On The Level Talk Show. Call The On The Level Talk Show on 0121 678 or 0121 Okay, the last five minutes of the show, we have a caller online. I'm going to ask this caller to just make one brief brief point i mean brief like 20 seconds brief oh my yes who am i speaking to okay greetings uh, sister k just oh, briefly okay greetings sister okay, k okay greetings professor greetings sister okay just briefly you know just you've been ma- ma- mentioning about this bible is basically a lie unless you read it would you recommend then uh, 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 our people to go back to 
the the book, you know, from the the first people on Earth, like I said, and look at the Fortitude Declarations and all that, which obviously, as we know today, some of those are now put into the Bible, which are known as the Ten Commandments and so on, and some of the Psalms, like and look at is it Ancanon's Psalms? Ancanon. Yeah, Ancanon Psalms. Uh, his writings, sorry, and you look at look at the Bible. This this the writings of very similar in in our Bible. Okay, thank you, caller. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sister Kay. Okay, we just have uh, three minutes left. Professor, would you like to answer that question? Well, yes, you have to be very careful about what's written about ancient Egypt because you have to realize that the ancient Egyptians never wrote a history of themselves, mm. okay? And what's being written out there is written from conjured, accumulated studies of ancient Egypt and ancient Egyptian culture. So be very careful. I, I would like to go a little deep into this with her, but time won't allow Yeah, it's that. maybe next week or the week after we can look more at that. Right, and then another thing about the Rastafarian, you see, they have to understand that Rasta McKinnon, who is a.k.a. Haley Selassie, was a Christian. Mm-hmm. He was a Christian, so mm-hmm. therefore, uh, what's the difference? You know, you have a Jesus Christ, and you have a and there's somebody believing in another man, Called Rasta McKinnon, aka Hale Selassie. So, so you're saying that Rastafarians shouldn't believe in Hale Selassie? Eh? No, it's believing in himself. Believe in themselves, yeah, okay. This is, he's, he's, but this I is think really... I think you're missing the point though with Rastafarians where they or why they look to Hale Selassie, given the history that we've gone through, and you get to see this great African man who's on a throne, whose nation hasn't been conquered. Then you look up to him and you must think, well, there's something about these people that must be different. And I'm sure that has a, a big role to play within the religion of Rastafarianism. No human on earth was born with religion, nor should you practice religion. Know something about But yourself. surely, surely what they practice in Ethiopia is different from the Christianity that's practiced in the West. I understand that they replaced this dead mm-hmm. white man on the cross with a Rastafarian. Mm-hmm. Is um, on the Haley Selassie. Okay. They worship Haley Selassie. What's the difference? I'm saying to you, don't worship no man. Uh-huh. Don't diminish yourself down to worshiping anybody. Would you say it's good to have role models to be able to look to Haley Selassie's life, learn from it, and study it and say, okay, brilliant, these are the things Fine. that I like about this man's life? Yeah, that's great, but don't don't make a religion out of it. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. There's another book I want to tell our callers to get. Um, it's called The Biography of Satan by Kersey Graves. An excellent book, uh, The Biography of Satan. And it tells you where these concepts of Satan and hell and everything came from. So if you can, get hold of that book as well. Wow, Professor, I'm going to be linking you again next week. It's been a great show okay. today. Okay. And uh, next week we can talk about uh, the side effects that these religions leave on people. Yes, and I, I know you also wanted to talk about the Jewish myth exposed as well. Yes, yeah, the Jewish myth, myth exposed, yeah. Okay. Talk now, about that also. Professor, thank you for joining us on the Honor Level Toll Show today. Thanks for having me, Sister Anne Kobia. The Art Hotel. Art Hotel. Anne Kobia, empowering the community with the Honor Level Talk Show.